Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. I'm excited to have with me Mr. Ron Thompson. He works at Lampy and Malthus Lumber Company in North Carolina. And I'm excited to talk to Ron. So, Ron, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Yourself? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I mean, it's it's a little chilly here in North Carolina today, but I, you know that's the way it is. Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay that's okay i guess it's supposed to be sometimes but uh you know i'm more of a warm weather guy so i'm looking forward to that springtime you know so you know i love these conversations ron you won't, you were a little hesitant about wanting to do it but i i, I kind of coached you into it a little bit because I, I just know from talking with you i'm anxious to hear about your story so maybe just tell us a little bit about to where you how to how you got to where you're at right now well, out of high school, I went in the Marine Corps. Uh, and that's where I got my basic electronics training. Okay. And then uh, when I got out, I uh, went to uh, we have a relative that lives in Dallas, and they put me up to look for a job and uh, started with a company, Forney Engineering, which uh, they had designed their own control system before basically the PLCs came out, and this is for uh, – big boilers, you know, coal fired and stuff like that. Right. Right. Uh, left there and had a little brain problem, but took another job, which I shouldn't have. But anyway, uh, then I moved back to Arkansas and hired on with uh, Brunswick defense. Okay. And that's uh, their defense manufacturer. Yeah. And, uh, they had designed their own control system. So I learned, I had to learn how to program it for, for any engineering using their code. And then I had to learn to program it, uh, Brunswick using their code. So I was, I was able to learn coding, you know, at, at different places. And that's where I first got involved with PLCs. They had some of the primitive ones, uh, Texas instruments. And then, uh, I, I was there for several years. Uh, then I went down, hired on it, uh, Oscar Meyer in Sherman, Texas. I was there for about 13 months and then came back to Brunswick. And then when I left Brunswick, they were, they were kind of phasing out a lot of stuff there. Right. In Brunswick. Right. Because of defense contract. And I hired on at a company called CSMI, uh, which is a lumber manufacturing equipment. Okay. And I worked there, I guess a little over a year. And then I had another brain issue and jumped out and then came back a year later. Uh, it, at that time, USNR had bought CSMI. So I was with the USNR for several years. And then uh, they, they started closing down the office in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and moving people out. And I didn't, I didn't want to move to the West Coast. So hmm. I jumped over to another company that was based in uh, Canada, Codenews McGee. Okay. And I worked there for uh, probably 13 months and then started helping one of the uh, guys that used to work, work at USNR that had gone into contract. Mm -hmm. So I started helping him on the side and then wound up sewing to him after I left Conan's McGee. And I, I did that for uh, probably 10 years. Okay. And one, of the, one of our customers was Lampy and Malfus. Okay. And I'd done several jobs out here and, last one i was working on they approached me and here i am okay so that 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 brought you to north carolina yes i got you now is that uh for first of all thank you for your service in the, as a marine sir thank you. yes sir we we'll definitely appreciate that now coming to north carolina are you enjoying it north carolina yes oh okay. yep not, it's not quite like enjoying the job. right right but it's not arkansas though no, it's not Arkansas. <laughs> well, hopefully you get to get you know, get back home from time to time. Yeah, you still got a house there. Okay, okay, very good. So, I mean, it sounds like you had a, just a hodgepodge of different types of experiences. And did you enjoy the PLC programming and learning that? Yes, yes, I did. I, and it wasn't forced upon me. I just took it upon myself. Oh, okay. I mean, when I was with, at Brunswick, uh way I learned their programming language is but of course back then it was tractor feed paper. Right. And we'd have the program printed out on it and I'd be going through it and watching the machine and say, Oh, oh, oh okay. That's how that works. Right. You know, and just 
just started learning it from there. And then on PLCs, they've come a long way. And I just had to go through the different levels of learning yeah. different coding methods and stuff. So it sounds like you're just a naturally inquisitive type of guy. I find work for myself. Okay. Okay. I'm starting, <laughs> I'm starting to pick that up on you. Okay. So, I mean, you, you're, you've been to a lot of industries, Ron, and you've seen a lot of things changing, particularly over the last couple of years. You know, what, what are some of the biggest challenges? I mean, particularly like at, Lamp at Lampy, what have been some of the biggest challenges is because we hear stuff from workforce development to, you know, the skills gap to you name it. I uh, just didn't know what, what are you seeing? Uh, well, I, you have to have the desire mm -hmm. to know it, mm -hmm. to learn it. Mm -hmm. and that's let's talk about the network. And I just found out I didn't really want to do that part of right. it. Right. Right. Uh, but yeah, you just got to stick to it because it's changing all the time. I'm with you. I'm with you. Now say somebody's out there on and they want to come to work in manufacturing or work in the lumber industry. Uh, and you've got some experience under your belt, but let's just pretend they're brand new to it. What what would be some advice you would give them to, before they come to the, to the lumber industry? Well, as far as you, are you talking about it on the production side or doing what I do? Either I'm thinking more along the lines of doing what you're doing, working with the electronics, the controls, things like that. Well, you got, you got to know the basics. I mean, you got to have the foundation to build from. Okay. Okay. That's that's a big part of it. Where do you get that at? Where where where, where would you point somebody to get that? Well, you can get it in school. Now they'll they'll teach you the basics, but there's still a lot of learning to do. Right. Uh, you never, and I'm still learning. I'm never. I had never stopped learning. Right. Right. And uh, you know, as far as PLCs, a lot of it is still ones and zeros. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, that really hasn't changed that much. I'm curious. It, at, at I mean, it has gotten a lot more complex, right? For sure, for sure. Any any type of interns or apprentices or things like that that you've worked with over the years? I haven't ever done any kind of internships or apprentices or anything. It's just just been me most of the time, right? I, you know, I, like I say, I find work for myself. I don't have to have somebody behind me saying, "Do this, do that." I'm with you. How about mentors? Have you had any mentors or people that have been able to help you along the way, learn some of these skills or, or learn, or learn some of the, uh, you know, those, those core areas that have made you better? Well, I've learned pretty much, and I'm like I say, I'm still learning, but I've learned pretty much from everybody that I've worked with. Right. Different ways of doing things. I mean, as far as PLCs, you can give a dozen programmers one task and you'll have 12 different programs. Right. That's right. That's right. And, and I think, uh, you know, I, first time I got pretty humbled the first time I start messing with PLCs and I had this little program and it was, I thought it was pretty good. It was maybe 20 lines of, of code. Right. And then I took it to my boss and he did the same thing. And I think three, and I was like, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> pretty humbling moment. Like, okay, I got it. There's, I got a long way to go. Well, I got humbled too, just <laughs> last year, I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Made a rookie mistake. Couldn't find it. It happens, right? It really does. If it happens so much. I called somebody in and about five minutes he saw it. I said, Oh <laughs> Well, I mean, at least you had somebody you call in and, 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 and if you if you if you program long enough, you know, you know, sometimes sometimes you can be just you can make a mistake. You can be too close to it too, right? I mean you can just really be yep. too close to it and then all it takes is that outside fresh set of eyes and it's just blatantly obvious. But, you know, so I've been there and done that. I, sh I share the pain with you, my friend. <laughs> well, I still make rookie mistakes. Right. Right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Now, when people are out there, they may be thinking about the lumber industry in, in particular, there may be something that comes to mind or, or, or a type of, of preconceived notion about lumber or just manufacturing. Is there anything that you like to de to just debunk right now and say, you know what, this that's not what this industry is about? Um, just curious, is anything popped to mind there? Well, when I first got into the timber industry back in '93, I was I was amazed at the amount of technology that they had in sawmills. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just boggled my mind. Right. I didn't even know some of that stuff was out there. Yeah. You know now. I'm, 
doing it myself. It's pretty awesome. It's, well, with the motion control and stuff that we have on our equipment, it's it's a uh, in, industrial robot, but it's not a robot. But it has all the same type of control. That's right. It really is. I mean, when you take when you take the, look at the precision type cuts that you guys are making, and you know, maximize. I think the first time I saw optimizer saw run and just blew my mind. Oh, okay, I mean, as the speed, you know, because those yeah. logs are coming. They and they're all different dimensions, different different parameters. You know, different from an engineering standpoint, and the different data. You know, that's a completely different data set for each log. Yet, the equipment's determining what's the the right cuts to make to to optimize. You know, to get the right dimensional lumber out. And that was at a, a at a dimensional lumber mill. Yeah. But uh, it's just sawmills. And I'll tell you, in l- the lumber industry in, in general, it's extremely high tech. Yes, yes, it is. Like I say, I was amazed at the level of technology. No kidding. And it's just you know, gotten more. Right, right. Absolutely. I am curious, you know, when, when the stuff that you've been working on in the past, Ron, and, and what, you know, it doesn't sound like networking makes you the happiest, but where are you the happiest? Are you, is that when you're PLC programming? Is that when you're troubleshooting? Like when do you even find, when do you find yourself doing the stuff you enjoy the most? Uh, the PLCs and the HMIs. I mean, I okay. I don't really hate the uh, IT stuff. It just I get frustrated with it because I don't understand enough. <laughs> right, really. right, right. But you like the HMI design? Yes. Okay. I like figuring out different ways to do things. Now the HMI design aspect that sometimes that can pull out some some artistic skill set too because you're trying to really you know lay that screen out to make it look and feel and be functional. So. Uh, so got any artistic background, Ron, or is that just, that's completely separate? I don't really have any artistic background, but I'm proud of some of my screens. I hear you. I hear you. Most HMI designers are. That's why I wanted to bring it you, up. You can ask Kay. That's right. <laughs> I will definitely ask him. I'm definitely asking him. So, and I tell you what, you look at some of those HMI screens and the people who design them, it's, it's phenomenal. And a lot of it, you, I think the better, the best HMI designers I've seen, they know the process, you know, and because and mm-hmm. that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to connect the process to the, to the human, to, to the machine and to make it all make sense. So, you know, what you, what you do there is, is outstanding work. All right. Well, I, over the years, I've kind of, uh, you know, other people's codes just kind of, I've come up on my own personal preference to, yeah. uh, ways to do things. Right. That's okay. I mean, that means you put your put your little signature on it, right? Yep. And the the electricians, I need to get them to start training them. I'm gonna try to do that this year, but I'm gonna tell them this is the way I do it, and this is why, and they can go their own way. I'm I'm curious, and you you got my curiosity. I'm sure you got some people out there. So, what are some of your preferences? Is it Tag structure, or I man, I'm just trying to understand what are some of your preferences would be. Tag structure is a big part of it. Okay. And you know the old, the old Allen Bradley software, the DOS based. I still use the same colors. Okay. Even in the logics. Okay. You know, plus the tag structure. I I do my tags a certain way. For instance, if it's a physical I/O point. Yeah. I'll have it all caps, just like the sixty two hundred software did. Okay. You know, and if it's a tag that's generated, I don't use all caps. Okay. That way I know if it's all caps, it's a physical device. Right. That's a quick visual indicator for you too when you're looking at it. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Not not everybody does that, but that's that like I say, I've developed my own personal preference. It works for you, right? Yep. That's right. I'm gonna try to drill it into them too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. How about any highlights, anything that jumps out? I sound like you work at some really cool companies, you know, anything that stands out like, man, that was a really fun place to work at. I enjoyed Brunswick. I enjoy it here. Uh, when I was at USNR and, you know, like I said, I had a little brain issue and jumped out of that for about a year. That's because I thought I burned out, but I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't burned out. I just, wasn't used to traveling all the time because that's, that's constant travel. And then when I went to subcontracting, I enjoyed that because I got to go to a lot of different places. Uh, 
US and R, I kind of got lucky. Uh, I got to take my wife to Australia twice. Really? Yeah, we got a week vacation. No kidding. Paid man. vacation. <laughs> yeah, I went down there for a, a service call uh-huh. and then the startup to follow. Wow. Well, I finished the service call and we were over toward the Sydney area and the uh, startup was across the bottom side. I called off, said, I'm ready for the startup. They said, well, they're about a week away from needing you. Take a vacation. I said, okay. <laughs> I had my wife with me. Why not? There you go. That worked out great, didn't it? We had a good time. <laughs> and that's a great lead in to kind of where I want to go next. So love to talk about family. So sounds like your marriage and what's your wife in. What can you share with us about your family? Well, all my, it, we've got an empty nest. Okay. Uh, my oldest daughter is actually living in our house back in Arkansas. Okay. For insurance reasons. Right. And my wife is staying out here. Uh, like I say, she got to go with me twice to Australia. Uh, now, how, we had, how, we had, we've had some good times. How many kids do you have? Three. So, uh, oldest daughter. My, actually, uh, yeah, my oldest daughter uh, is living in the house, you know, yep. like I say, for insurance reasons. My son is a traveling nurse. Okay. He's out in Nevada right now. My youngest daughter is fixing to marry in Austin, so she's been down there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, I'll still have a connection down there. Okay, well, you, you're across, you, and you're all across the place. It sounds like too. <laughs> Mostly southeast, but uh, I've been to Canada quite a few times. Right. Uh, as far as foreign countries, uh, Australia is it. Right. Right. But US and R is, is worldwide. Right. I got you. Now, what what do you enjoy doing for fun, Ron? Outside of work and, and fixing uh, HMIs and controls, Any, anything that you like passing time with? <laughs> basically by the time i get done working here uh i just watch tv <laughs> just just some relaxing time right yeah keep my feet up i hear you i hear you now i am curious pretty long days here i bet they are yeah i bet they are now do you do you listen to any podcast do you listen to any watching a youtube anything like that i watch an occasional youtube I, right this this first exposure to the podcast okay Okay. Well, now you got one in your repertoire. You can put that as your, as your favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. Now we, we, we do like to play a game, Ron. I like, I love to do this with the guys, you know, and, and girls out here when, when we have our, our, uh, hero episodes, we call it a lightning round. I'm curious for you. So I'm just going to throw a bunch of random stuff at you. Fun stuff. Uh, you just let me know first thing that comes to mind. Okay. I'll do my best. All right. What's your favorite food? Spaghetti. Spaghetti. All right. Uh, adult beverage. Adult beverage? Yes, sir. Vodka. Vodka. Okay. All right. So what would be on your nightstand right now? I don't have a nightstand. <laughs> That's the first time I've got that answer. That's okay. Very good. an RV. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. What's your, what's your favorite app on your phone? Weather. Weather app? Is, now, which weather app do you use? Uh, Radar Now. Radar Now. Okay. How about uh, favorite sports team? I don't really have a favorite sports team. I just kind of go for the underdog most of the time. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I, I don't watch football or baseball or any of that stuff avidly. Right. Now, favorite movie? Lord of the Rings. Ooh, that's a good one. How about TV show? That would probably be an NCIS. Okay, so you're an NCIS guy now. You like the original stuff, or do you like the off series? Uh, mostly the original. Yeah, nothing like Gibbs, right? Just nope, man. Mm-mm-mm. What a that's good the type show. of show we like to watch. Right. Got any? Uh, got any guilty pleasures? Chocolates, things like that. I like chocolate. <laughs> Not as much as my daughter does. <laughs> now, how about destinations? What's the coolest place you've ever been? Australia. I bet that was. What was so cool about that? I never, I haven't talked to anyone who's been to Australia before. Well, it's it's a different country. Right. I used to, uh, one time when I was 
in, I think it was Victoria. I was running. Right. In the mornings. What they call the Esplanade. And you've heard of the Laughing Kookaburra, right? Right. I'd be running down this path and I'd hear this bird. And I said, oh, what kind of bird is that? Well, it was a kookaburra. I said, he's laughing at me running. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. The animal life down there is a lot different. Right. Right. Uh, you know, like the wombat, they say that's like running over a rock. It's right. just solid muscle. Right. The uh, kangaroos and stuff, they're muscle too. Right. And they'll do, I would say, more damage than a deer. Really? We had a contract crew come into one of the jobs down there. Came in late because they had hit a kangaroo and it looked like they hit a telephone pole. No and kidding. Caved it in that bad. Oh, my gracious. But, yeah, there's, you know, you see the white cockatoos on TV and stuff. Right, right. They're in flocks down there. Really? Flying wild. Yep. They got all kinds of different pretty birds. Right. As the, is the uh, cuisine, the food, is that a lot different than what you would expect here? Uh, they do have some different things. Uh, they've actually got McDonald's and Pizza Hut and stuff like that, but uh, they don't use tomatoes. They use beets. Okay. You know, as far as a burger and stuff like that. Now I did, I did try kangaroo one time, and it's 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 an acquired taste. Right. Right. It's, it's a little gamey. Right. I got you. They have. Uh, they have a product down there similar. It looks like Nutella. Right. And the kids grow up on it like peanut butter. Oh, okay. And it's, it's got a nasty taste. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's made from, uh, used yeast, uh, -huh. uh from brewing. Really? It's a byproduct from brewing and that's what it's made out. Huh. It's just bitter to me. <laughs> All right, well, they grow up on it, so they love it. <laughs> last, last question on the lightning round, Ron. Dogs or cats? Dogs. All right. We've got three Westies right now. All right. All right. You help but love them. There you go. My daughter got me started on that, my youngest daughter, because she had a Westie. Oh, yeah? She came out to the East Coast for a month and left the dog there. And that little thing, she'd get up on the bed in the morning and start headbutting you. I'm going to go out. <laughs> and just fell in love with them. That's funny. That's funny. Well, Ron, this has been great, man. Just getting to know you and, and, and which and your story. Definitely thank you for the insight. We call it Eco Ask Why. We always wrap up with the with the why, Ron. So, you know, if somebody wants to come to you on the street and just wants to know what your personal why is, what would it be? Hmm. Is that a trick question? I don't know. <laughs> why? Well, because I enjoy what I'm doing. Okay. Nothing wrong with that, my friend. Sometimes it's the simple answers that are the best, right? Yep. Well, Ron, anything else you got, you like to share today? I think that'll do it before I start coughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ron, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to share your story with us. Definitely learned a lot. And, and uh, for our listeners out there, check out the show notes. And, and thank you again, bud. I hope you have a wonderful day. All right, you too. Thank you, Ron.